For my project, I'm proposing a museum exhibit on the Warren Commission controversies. This poll from 2015 shows the assassination is still pertinent, as does the upcoming movie Jackie and the success of the recent Stephen King written miniseries, 112263. We see here that only about 30% of Americans, as of 2015, believe in the Warren Commission. So what is the Warren Commission? A quick crash course. On November 22, 1963, JFK was assassinated in Dallas, Texas, while riding in his open-top limo. Within days, the new president, Lyndon Johnson, appointed then-Chief Justice Earl Warren to lead the investigation. At first, Johnson was going to let Dallas handle the investigation, but he was convinced by others around him that if the national government didn't head it up and assert itself, the resulting public mania may result in war. Warren himself initially declined the appointment in honor of his friendship with Kennedy, but he hesitantly accepted. Less than a year later, the investigation issued its 888-page findings in 26 volumes, but this far from exhausted the conversation about the assassination. If anything, it further ignited it. To this day, historians remain torn about the accuracy of the Commission's findings and the importance of the investigation to the American people. I chose to do this because I saw a vacuum in terms of public information on the investigation of the assassination. A few years ago, I visited the JFK Presidential Library in Boston. This past summer, I went to the Sixth Floor Museum in Dallas, dedicated to the assassination. Neither of these talked about the Warren Commission, nor do other museums that house artifacts important to the assassination. So I want to create a museum exhibit that talks about this after the assassination. In order to understand the changes in historic study of the assassination and why different conspiracy theories ebbed and flowed in popularity, I had to consider the contextual history, particularly Cold War relationships between the United States, Cuba, and the Soviet Union. Domestically, it was also important to understand issues and the political climate of the era of the assassination, especially Kennedy's enemies within government. Most importantly, I had to consider the changes in relationships between the American public and American government in the years following the assassination to understand the climate in which historians are writing. In the years after the assassination, most historians publicly accept Warren's findings. LBJ himself publicly accepted the findings while privately holding reservations. A few historians did dare to write against Warren early on, however, especially Edward J. Epstein and Harold Weisberg. Weisberg had 63 U.S. publishers deny him in 1965 before he ultimately self-published his book, Whitewash. Other early historians who dared criticize the Warren Commission faced serialization or publication in less than academic magazines like Penthouse and Playboy. However, in the wake of Watergate in Vietnam and follow-up investigations to the Warren Commission, historians found a climate more accepting of criticisms. This era of cynicism and open debate continued after the 1978 House Select Committee on Assassinations found that Warren didn't research all avenues and evidence thoroughly, and therefore a conspiracy was likely. Some historians responded by teaming with experts in other fields to explore the evidentiary issues raised by the House Select. Interest died out in the mid-1980s until Oliver Stone's movie JFK introduced a new generation to the controversies of the assassination. The resulting 1992 JFK Act and creation of the Assassination Records Review saw thousands of pages of documents declassified, giving more evidence for historians to analyze. With 5,000 more pages of research to be declassified next year, a new wave of historical research is likely just time for this exhibit. In terms of the conspiracy theories, historians have often tied the theories to the events that have been happening in America at a particular time as listed above. Each generation, a new person or group, becomes the focus of theorists to blame. Along the way, I encountered a couple of problems. First, historians are not universally agreed upon the importance of the assassination. In particular, Noam Chomsky and Howard Zinn both feel that the assassination, while sad, was not of huge historic importance. Further, some historians are hesitant to publish at all, or at least directly support any particular alternative theory, for fear of being discredited by being labeled a conspiracy theorist. Another major difficulty I've encountered is that anyone who has written a book about the assassination considers themselves an historian regardless of credentials or training. I've selected four of my recent sources, which have helped me considerably as I have redirected my energies in the past few weeks. First, Dr. Kenneth Ron's A History of Assassination Literature traces the chronology of changes to the historic literature related to the assassination itself. Second, Michael Kurtz, probably one of the most well-known assassination experts who even teaches a course in the assassination at Southeastern Louisiana University, has written a number of books and essays on the assassination and Warren Commission. In this particular essay, he argues why the assassination investigation are both still so incredibly important to the American people. Third, Dr. David Mantic's essay juxtaposes the previous two by saying that historians have been too silent and that they that those who do write don't do so to their full ability because they fail to work through 
uh, other fields or experts in other fields. And lastly, this interview with Noam Chomsky provides the other side that says the assassination is important. Overall, this has been a fun and fascinating project, exploring one of the topics I'm most passionate about with a new perspective. I would love to see a museum like this actually created and would love your input before I finish my final paper. Thank you.